Hello everyone, my name is Shelby and this is the series where I reveal what is inside these mystery pottery molds I found on Gumtree. Hello and welcome to mold 73. This one is a, I don't know, a medium sized mold I would say with one hole. We haven't done a one hole mold in a while. I opened it up and I was a bit excited this mold and opened it up a bit too early. You saw it warp as soon as I lifted it out. This one was a dud piece, so it went into the recycle bucket, but I used it as an opportunity to check if the thickness was good um, for this piece, because why not use it for something? I cut it in half and the thickness was perfect, so I re-poured the rest and didn't have the same issues again with my impatience. I did have one piece come out of the bisque kiln. I don't usually bisque fire first before adding color, but these ones I just wanted to add glaze to. But after the bis fire, I did notice this little hairline crack that went all the way through. So I'm not exactly sure what had caused this. Um, maybe me rushing the mold itself. I wouldn't usually fire that. I would usually put, pop that aside because I know it's going to open up in the kiln. But because I wanted six individual colored mugs, which you'll see me painting throughout this video, I thought let's just see how it goes and I can show you what I mean when it, when I say it opens up in the kiln if you've never seen that happen before and a reason why if it does have a crack why I wouldn't pursue it any further. But just take note of that tiny little hairline crack and you'll see the result at the end how much it's opened up. Now I want to apologize for the length of this video. Well, I, I feel bad because I know what it's like watching your favorite YouTube creator and they release one video a week and you're hanging out for that video and then you find out six minutes long and you're like, oh. <laughs> but this mold itself, I was thinking about it and umming and ahhing what I should do with it, but it just it was so limiting for my own style. Like I really just couldn't figure out a way that I could utilize this vessel to bring out my style other than sort of glazing it and replicating the 70s retro mugs that you used to get in the different color glaze. I I thought maybe I could underglaze each individual letter and do so like rainbow coffee letters, but that would have taken so long. Um, and I, yeah, I just thought that they would look better as a set if they were all just their own individual glaze colors. And I'd also in ordered some more glazes because I didn't have some colors. So I thought, let's test them on here. I know they're gonna work because they're commercial glazes, but I don't know what they're gonna look like all over a piece. So that's what we're doing this video. I know it's short, I'm sorry. I really wish I could do more with it. I just, it's just very limiting. Sometimes as I look back on molds that I have finished and I'm doing the voiceover, I then get like this wave of ideas that I could have done, but I didn't think of at the time. And like what I said before about maybe individually painting the letters, something could have done was maybe cover it in a pattern and then did an antique wash of another color covering it and then washing away the letters somehow. Might have made a really cool effect. I don't know. I just, I think that this piece is suited to a glaze and I think you could play around with different glaze combos on this and get some really cool results. I personally use commercial glazes because I don't have the time to experiment with making my own. You can absolutely make your own and this is where it could become a really specialty piece is when you have developed your own glaze recipe and can make some really amazing things happen. I personally specialize with underglaze and developing illustration wise on my pieces rather than the glaze side of pottery and there's it just depends on what you're into right so I'm hoping that these will look like a really cool sort of rainbow retro 70s set very much speaking to the era that these were created in mixing it up a bit this week and showing you the mold here because I forgot to put it in earlier but these were created in 1976. So really tying into that 70s era of the glazed stackable mugs that are so collectible now and you can find throughout the op shops. So fingers crossed these come out just as beautiful. I have a collection myself so I'm hoping that these will fit in nicely. I opened up the kiln and you could see my face reaction as I looked at the color and then saw the crack at the back how much it had blown open. So let's take a look at that piece first. Let's get rid of this, the blow first. So this was the speckled green glaze and it looks amazing on this coffee mug, especially tying into the 70s color palette. 
but you can already see there the crack has opened up so much from a hairline crack it has blown apart and you can see that the lip no longer lines up and it goes all the way through and it's quite a bright white this would not be usable for drinking um, i would use this as a pot or break it down for a mosaic the next piece is my favorite glaze out of the lot. I cannot believe how vibrant this color came out and how to find the letters look. Top favorite, Chum Plum, that glaze was called. And then we've got the Orca glaze, which also looks quite lovely. I'm not sure how I feel about the semi-transparent glazes. They do have a very mottled look that I'm not sure if I'm a fan of. The next one is the yellow, which is called Mimosa from Spectrum. And this one was my second favorite. I love the subtle mellow buttercup feel of this one. Very nice. I then go on to the cranberry glaze, which is another semi-transparent. I, I like this the least probably. I don't know. I don't like how modeled it feels, but hey, it could be for someone else. I then have this green one at the end, which was the cactus. I love the color of this glaze, but I did put it on a bit too thick and I noticed that this was the one that warped from me trimming it to try and make them stackable. And it also had this weird little pin holly thing that was, it was glazed over, but I'm not sure how I feel about that. But you can see how thick the glaze was on. It almost lost definition of the letters. So here is a transformation from the glazes unfired to fired on top of the glaze bottles that they're from. I popped that in so that you can screenshot that or come back to this video if you want to buy those glazes and see how they looked. But otherwise, I really like how these look as a set. They're a really nice subtle rainbow color and I could also, also develop this idea by layering different colors of glazes and having different fusions to give different results. I think that would look really amazing. My favorite three was actually the green, yellow and the red glaze, which actually ended up looking like a traffic light, which was pretty cool. Anyway, let me know what you think of the mold in the comments and maybe some colors I should try next on these pieces if I make them again. Thank you so much for watching this week's reveal and next week should be really special as I'm collaborating with a fellow Ballarat artist on this piece and I can't wait to show you what it is.